The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't yet viewed the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, maps are graphical windows to display and work visually with components, and they can be used for many kinds of visual interrogation because they're a working tool integrated with the rest of your work in the Max QDA project. This video is in two parts. First, we show you what maps look like and the actions that can be taken within them. We first cover maps in general and then the creative coding mode, which enables the visual reorganization of the position of codes in the code system. In the second part of the video, we show models, which are a special type of map for generating visualizations based on the work done elsewhere in your MaxQDA project. Max maps can either be opened from the visual tools menu using this option here or from the shortcut icon here. Opening Max Maps brings up a floating window that can be resized and moved around in the usual way. You can see that in this project there are several maps and models already created and I'll show you a few of them shortly. At the moment though I've got an empty map created so I'm just going to bring a few components to start working with into this map and I can do that just by dragging and dropping. So I'm just going to take the focus groups document group because that's what I'm thinking about at the moment and just two of those documents to work with. I'll also bring in a few codes again just by dragging and dropping and I can scroll down and choose the ones I want. You can see across the top of Max Maps there are various shortcut icons and it's important to understand that you need to be in the correct mode in order to undertake various actions within the map. There are two modes, the one I'm currently in is the select mode and that allows me to select a component within the map and move it around into the position that I want it to be in. If I want to link components to one another then I need to be in the link mode which is this icon here and then I have different shortcut icons available to me at the top of the screen and I can draw links between components so for example I can just drag and drop on the other component and you'll see that there are three different link icons to make use of in this way. If I want to label one of those links then I need to go back into the select mode in order that I, that I can double click on a link and that brings up a window that I can then add a label to. And you'll see that in this properties window I've also got the ability to change the font, colour etc and I can also change uh, the line that I want to have so for example I can make it a dash and thick and change the colour. So I'm just going to focus in on gr group two, the employed urban participants and if I right click on a component in a max map then I get various actions that I can take. So for now I'm just going to import the codes and that will automatically bring into the map all the codes that sit in that document and then I can move them around and you'll see that it linked up automatically with the depth code that I already had in this map. There are two ways to look at the actual coded segments at these codes. I can either right click on the document and ask to see the overview of coded segments which will bring up the familiar overview window and I can navigate around and look at the coded segments. If I want to bring some of the coded segments into the map then I can do that by dragging and dropping from the overview window. I'm just going to do that on the economy code so first of all generating the overview and then once I found a coded segment that I'm interested in I can drag it from the overview window and drop it into my map. I'll just do that with two and you'll see an icon telling me that I have the coded segment in there and then if I want to see the actual content then I can ask to insert the text of the coded segment as a label and I'll see the content within the map. I then need to go back into link mode in order to link up to remind myself that that coded segment came from the economy code because it doesn't draw that link automatically for me. 
Let's just focus on a couple of other actions that we can take. This time I'm going to look at group one and I'm going to right click and ask to see an overview of memos. And I get the same as we just had with the coded segments. And of course I can also ask to import the memos and to visualize those within the map. I can also create new objects within the map that don't exist elsewhere in my project. I can do that in two ways, either by using this icon here to create a new free object, and I can choose whether I want it to be a circle, a rectangle, or a rectangle with rounded borders. That's the option I'll take, and I get that new object here. I can resize it and double click on it in order to get the object properties window on view, and then I can give it a label. And again, change various properties about this, including importing a picture. So if I choose this option and click on this button, then I can find an image and bring that into the map. I'm not actually going to do that now. Uh, instead, what I'll do is I'll show you the text field, and that allows me to add a label here, which, for example, could become the title of this map. So that's just an initial overview of Max Maps. But let's have a look at a couple of the other maps that I've already got created in this project. I'll go and show you the map of security, and you'll see that in this one, I've started to think about that issue in a little bit more detail and using the map to illustrate some of the evidence for the particular themes that have been used around security. I've also got here a map called Realm of Concerns, and at the moment that looks like it hasn't got much going on in it, but you'll see on the right hand side of the screen, we've got the layers option. And layers are ways of grouping components within a map in order that you can hide or reveal them. So at the moment, we've only got the base layer on view, but I can ask to see all of the components that are sitting in the immediate impacts layer, and that will bring in those aspects. And then later on, I can ask to see the wider impacts. And this can be useful in a presentation when you want to talk about particular areas of a map first and then other areas later on. You'll also see that we've got the option to reduce the size of a map if we need more space to play with or indeed to increase it when we want to focus in on a particular area. These two icons here allow us to change the display of the code symbols. For example, if I don't like the labels or I don't want to see the colours that I've applied to the codes previously, I can turn that off and just work with the labels themselves. Or indeed, I can ask using this icon to display the code frequency. So this is now telling me how many coded segments across the whole project have been linked to each code. Creative coding is a special mode of working in maps that allows you to organise codes by creating relationships between them that can then be reflected in the code system in the hierarchical listing. This can serve many purposes, but is particularly useful when working inductively, generating many detailed concepts grounded in the data and then ordering them into meaningful hierarchies. So I'm just going to open up the creative coding mode, which needs to be done from the code's main menu. And you'll see that you have a space on the right hand side and your list of codes on the left. As you can see, you can just drag the codes that you want to organise into the maps area. And when you're ready, hit the start organising codes button. So I'll just do that by dragging in a few. There's various codes here that I want to create a new subcode uh, from. So I'll just take a few of them. And let's imagine that I want these ones to become subcodes of my informal effects on social code. So now I'm ready, I can choose the Start Organising Codes button, and I'm just going to go into the link mode and drag from what I want to be the top level code onto the other codes. And when I'm ready, I can just choose the Quit Creative Coding option and I will read carefully the warning that comes up, but you can see that if I want this to be reflected in my main coding scheme, I can click yes, and if not, I can just click no, but the map will be saved, whatever I choose. 
I'm going to click yes now just to show you what happens and you'll see that back in my code system those four codes have now become subcodes of informal effects, effects on social and they've been removed from the other area of the coding schema where they were previously. This is an alternative way of reorganising codes from just dragging and dropping in the main code system which you saw in the video about codes. And if you like working with your codes visually or have lots of them, that can be a useful option. And as you saw, you can do that piecemeal as I did, uh, or you can spend a longer time organizing, reorganizing a larger section of your coding scheme.